About two-thirds of New Zealand homes were built before 1978, before insulation was required. It is important to consider how to improve these homes so that they can be more easily heated without using excessive amounts of energy. Brands undertook a project for Beacon Pathway to examine upgrades to nine 1970s homes over three years. An upgrade is generally intended to take a house from a level of energy usage to a lower level of energy usage, such as shown here. What is important to consider is what energy services you get from that level of energy usage. For example, what is the average internal temperature within that home? After an upgrade, it is conceivable that rather than reducing your energy usage, the same amount of energy is used, but a warmer temperature is achieved. We call this a full take-back of energy savings as improved temperatures. As many homes are underheated, it is probably desirable to achieve some level of energy reduction while increasing indoor temperatures. This is called partial take-back. There are some other directions in which you can move from the starting position. One is to increase energy usage while increasing temperatures. This is not as strange as it may seem and may reflect a house that was previously too hard to heat to one that is more easier to heat and the occupants choose to heat it more often. This is called an increased level of service. The opposite situation is where the temperatures are reduced and the energy is reduced as well and is where the, the house is less used and less heated, uh, reflecting a decrease in service. An undesirable direction to travel is to increase energy use and decrease temperatures. This is where something is going wrong, it's a decrease in performance of the house and may reflect uh, insulation being bypassed or a faulty heating system being installed. So what happens to the nine houses that we examined? Well they were subject to three types of intervention. A basic intervention including ceiling and floor insulation, a standard intervention which included draft stripping and improvements to the heating systems, and a high intervention which included wall insulation, the installation of double glazing and solid fuel burners as well. This next graph shows the nine starting positions uh, from those houses. Because the houses were uh, varied in terms of the number of occupants and the heating systems, the energy usage that they started out using was quite varied as well. But we are interested in the changes, both in the first year where they had partially implemented the change and in the second year where they had fully implemented the change. This is the change in the first year and in the second year we can see um, the full implementation of the changes. It's interesting to see, for example, in P3, the clear shine of a partial take-back increased in temperature and a decrease of energy usage, but also in P8, where there's been a large change, but it's been in a reduction of service. The occupants in this house had one occupant move out, but also started to use their holiday home more regularly. P10 shows an increase in the level of service, increasing temperatures and increasing energy usage. And the comments back from the occupants was that the, ha the lounge was much warmer and much easier to heat, so they chose to use that space a lot more. For the other houses, the smaller interventions, we can generally see an increase of temperatures within that and the movement and change of energy usage is quite small. So in summary, we can see that um, big changes in the change to the house result in a big change of temperatures or energy usage within that house. The smaller interventions resulted in smaller change, but more often than not that was realised as improved temperatures than a reduction in energy services.